students are saying, I don't, I don't want to learn this way anymore. I'm not interested in that. I'm bored. I'm going to sit. It used to be the kids, you always knew who didn't pay attention because they opened the paper in the back row. Now it's everybody's on their mobile device. So the questions that we're going to address today are three. One, how is higher education changing? Two, what are the kinds of things and particularly open things or free things that are out there that are making this change? And then three, what are some things that you guys can do? Cool. All right. So we've got four forces of change. The first one I've already alluded to. It's students. Our kids are totally different when they're hitting high school. You guys have probably all heard about the millennial generation. The, you know, there's all sorts of different names for it. Generation Y. You hear all sorts of names. But basically, it's, it's, there's been quite a bit of science that students currently aged about like five or six through to 23 have different um, drivers, different motivations, different ways they want to interact with people, different ways they want to learn. We have a lot less money in higher education, a lot less money, um, a lot less federal money, and then a lot less state money for all sorts of various reasons. In California, there's you know, a whole host of legislation and then property tax, all sorts of things that, that cause that. But at the end of the day, it's less money. But at the same time, students are taking longer to finish because they're having to work part-time because not only do colleges have less money and universities, but students have less money too. But also, degrees are getting more expensive. In fact, they're getting more expensive pretty significantly. So we've got this sort of interesting space where less money to institutions, more expensive degrees, students have less money, but then it takes them time longer to finish. It's sort of creating this endless cycle around how can we be most efficient with what we're teaching and learning and how we're, how we're students in an environment where we have to do less with more. And sometimes less with more is using technologies in really effective ways. So higher education is addressing that. And then the final, um, the final driver of change in higher ed right now is there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of unique competition. So we talked a lot about these two models, the hybrid and the flip model. So hybrid is where you take half of, half or not even half, it could be any portion of a normal class and put it online. And then the rest of the class they meet face to face. But know that hybrid means half online or some portion online, some portion in a normal face to face setting. Now something that often gets confused with is also this flipped phrase. So if you're reading in the newspaper that a district is flipping their classroom, you're thinking, what does flipping my classroom mean? What they're doing is they're taking the homework that kids used to do at home, and they're putting it in the classroom, and they're taking the boring lectures out. They're replacing them with other materials, sometimes lectures, recorded lectures, but sometimes other kinds of interesting materials, and then actually hands-on with the kids in the class. While also thinking about Higher education knows they've got to use mobile devices. Students don't read their emails anymore. We know it. It's so funny. I still read my email. I'm, you know, I'm thinking, oh, email, so this is the way I, everybody gets in touch with me. No, they get in touch with me through Facebook and Twitter and every other social media platform. And while higher education, of course, doesn't want to mix the personal right, with the academic, and there needs to be an understanding for academics, they also know that's where the kids are and they need to be able to use those tools really effectively to help teach the kids. So you're gonna see a lot more mobile devices. They're also ubiquitous. You know, students have some sort of device by the time they get to university. There's also this whole new world of open resources. It's been around for 10 years or so, but it's really emerging. And it's evolved itself into, we'll talk a little bit about MOOCs in a minute. It's evolved itself into all these kind of crazy online courses and free resources and things that students have access to and universities are capitalizing on that. And then there's also flexible scheduling. Um, this online aspect of it is what uh, the colleges and universities are doing. They're creating different ways for students to take classes at different times of day. So once again, they can be involved in all these other things that the millennial generation wants to. Now the final thing that colleges um, are really getting into is K-12 preparedness. But what does this actually really mean for you all as parents, grandparents, friends of kids, and so forth? Well, what it means is there's a whole lot of stuff out there for you to tap into, and then some things that you can do with your kids 
with your friends' kids, with your grandkids, that you can help them be better prepared for college. But there's a couple of different sites, and I'm making some examples here, of free online games, free online videos and resources and quizzes, and all sorts of tools that you can send kids to to go get good, disciplined, specific, vetted, well-known content. So MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. Actually, these are Coursera, Canvas, edX, those are all companies that offer these MOOCs. They are free courses, they'll have a duration of time, and <coughs> you, students go in, they watch videos, they do quizzes, they work on peer assignments, and they can even discuss with one another in their discussion forums and environments. The challenge with, with online learning is it's often very independent. You have to remind yourself to go log in. You have to go participate. You own the learning. Because a very high portion of students, the first online course they take, they fail. Because of this. Because they don't know how to be independent learners, and the second one, because they don't know how to manage their time. All of a sudden, they have 10 things to do, and it's two days left before the end of the class, and they're scrambling to get it done, and they haven't learned that. Technology management, helping students understand, and, and I have information literacy as the fourth, helping students understand how to use technologies academically, because they're there. And then finally, being able to have students communicate online. Totally different than communicating in person, we know that. And different than how you communicate personally. How do you collaborate online? How do you communicate with other people online? Helping them understand what those skills are. What's tone in email? You know, why you need to capitalize things. Those kinds of things that are different than how they use technology personally are really important because once again, if they're not taking an online course, guaranteed they're taking a flip course and most likely they're taking a blended course, all of which will require communication and collaboration online. There's research that says that starting at age, I think it's age five, you have three minute, three minute focus at age five and then it goes up every year one, one minute and it like maxes out at 20. And there's actually a fair amount of research on this. So about 20, 22 minutes is our max. Well, the challenge of taking online courses or being in higher education, being independent learners, having to do all of this on your own, is that you actually need to be able to focus on something more than 20 minutes. Now higher education is trying to help. We're chunking videos into little five minute pieces and we're then having them go to an activity or a self-check quiz question. So we're trying to help with this but they still need to know how to be able to focus or have time on task for more than 20 minutes, ideally. We're starting to mandate at UCI, and a lot of universities and colleges are doing this, stress management, health nutrition, and money management courses. We're gonna do all one unit courses. They get a free unit, it's a pass fail, but they're at least exposed to, how can I now manage myself outside of a um, either um, very managed household or sometimes very unmanaged household. Either way, they've not had any of these sort of experiences at home and college doesn't, I mean in high school, they're not having time to do this. They're just helping them get into college or go to the job that they want to do. Um, sleep, of course, uh, and leadership. To get into college, you need to express leadership. And once you're in college, because you will guarantee in every class have a group project, almost every class, it's different now because so much of what we do requires those social skills and those, those interaction skills um, because it's online, because of the way technology is evolving, that it's important for them to know that earlier and be more prepared for that when they come to college. Get them to apply what they're doing and have, a, have them do it in, a, in an environment where they have some responsibility, some personal responsibility. You can do that even through volunteer work, community service, giving them outlets to, to feed the kind of generation they are, while at the same time helping them with those social skills, leadership skills, and applying knowledge skills. Competitive sports activities, so that's a classic one. I think we all have, I, even I was raised with making sure you did that. But then, oops, didn't mean to do that. But then also thinking about strategy activities, or ways, once again, to apply collective knowledge. I mean, you can do, Games, you know, this is this could be online games, right? But this isn't first-person shooters. Unfortunately, this is not Call of Duty. Um, this is, though, uh, strategy games that are very popular and is helping engage them, and they're having to apply learning.